Hi, this is Margaret Rosa, and today I wanted to talk about having a grand cross in, in your chart. The, um, the planetary pattern of a grand cross <coughs> is comprised of four planets that um, are in square, 90 degree angles from each other on the four. Well, in this case, I'm going to talk about a cardinal square, but it could be cardinal, mutable, or fixed square you know, earth, water, or fire. Um, anyway, four planets <coughs> form a grand cross in square with each other, so that's 90 degree angles. So they're challenging aspects. And the focal, so they're for <coughs> there's four squares, and they form T-squares. There's two T-squares, you know, the top and the bottom are like T-squares. So they're comprised of <coughs> four 90 degree angles. So, and the focal point of the planets on these angles will be, <coughs> well, for one thing, they'll give you incredible focus and will. However, um, you know, if you can rise above, use your force of will and determination to rise above crisis and conflicts in your life that, you know, these are really challenging aspects. And you may feel like you're just plugged in, you know, <laughs> like you're just plugged in. Um, and that's not even with Uranus. I mean, if you have Uranus, that's another story. But um, yeah, so each planet in the pattern therefore becomes the focus of the T-square. So so, you know, uh, it's each, each of the angles in this case, because I'm talking about a cardinal T-square. So if you had um, a, a grand cross, you know, with Capricorn. Um, so the angles are Aries, cardinal, Capricorn up in the midheaven, Libra in the seventh house, and Uranus. I see. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, cancer on the IC. So, um, yeah. And if you happen to have Uranus there, you know, you will feel plugged in. But regardless if you have it or not, um, it's just enormous, enormous energy that you will have to learn how to deal with. Um, And, you know, of course, you would look to your ruling planet. Um, but it can be very, very challenging. And if you if you can rise above these challenges, you can, you know, use your force of will and determination to rise above these challenges in your chart to, to help others or to somehow evolve. Um, huh. Um, but you could invariably suffer great trials in, in your life. And um, the key is to rise above them and to use them to, to your, not only to your benefit, because, you know, say, if you, you know, it could be very self-centered and the lesson could be to learn to be less self-centered or that's with everything in Aries <laughs> on one, one part of the, the uh, Grand Cross. The opposition to Libra would be to learn how to relate to others, which is a, a challenge for the individual Aries, you know, who's self-centered and only wants to be me, 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 um, to learn to relate. That, that can be very, very challenging. And then Capricorn up on the midheaven is challenging both of them, <laughs> is challenging, um, I'm just looking at the Aries wheel right now because it's just easier than natural wheel. The Capricorn Midheaven is challenging the individual Aries to, you know, this is, this is, I'm not focusing on any planets up there. I'm just counting Capricorn as the Midheaven. So in general, that would be your self image or your, it could be authority. You could have to learn how to deal with authority figures, or you could 
uh, perhaps misuse your authority. Uh, yeah, or, or parental figures, or it could, it could manifest in that way. <clears throat> but it could also be your mid-heaven, I mean, your work or your career or, you know, how you project yourself in the public, public eye of Capricorn. Um, so you would use all four angles, you know, the individual learning to relate, Libra, to authority or somehow put a career up there in the mid-heaven. And the other angle, the fourth angle, would be uh, cancer, the home. So they're all pretty much in conflict with each other all the time. I, I hate to say conflict, but they are. They're, I mean, they're definitely squared, and they're forming two T-squares. So the top T-square is the sun. Say if you have other planets in Aries, um, they're squared Capricorn, and then they're squared, they're squared um, Libra, which is you know your your personal relationships, and so the personal relationships are squared to your home life, your family, your home life, fourth house, Cancer, and then Cancer is squared to <clears throat> your fourth house is squared to Aries, the individual. So you're always struggling to. Be yourself, relating to others can be very challenging um, without being dominating or, you know, you would be fiercely independent. Um, but you could, like, with, with a chart like this, you would lean towards sometimes the polarity, like, you know, lean on your Libra, you know, to overcome the Aries. Um, and to learn a sense of justice or, or working with others and just to learn to develop the areas that are being accented by these planets. They are, <clears throat> they are becoming the focal point of these squares. And each four angle is the focal point. And if you have planets there that, you know, will, will be the focal point, and especially in the T-squares, you know, the two squares, and they will point to whatever you have up there. Say you have um, Chiron, or you have the Sun. That would be the focal point of the T-square. <coughs> um, and the, the lower T-square, or the other, it could be any of the angles, you know, that would form the, or any of the planets that you have in these houses on the angles that would form the T-square, you know, that would uh, show you where, where to work, where you need the work to be done, or where the accent is, or <laughs> to lean on the opposite side of the, uh, the polarity, you know, like for Aries to, to look to Libra on how to do it, how to learn to work with others, uh, how to have communication and, and try to be fair-minded and include others, be more inclusive and peaceful and not, <clears throat> maybe not as direct, uh, which, you know, that's just what Aries do. They're very, very direct. So to look to Libra, they would, they, those are traits you would have to learn to, to temper it, you know, to temper it and to be more inclusive of other people. And in the whole life, too, uh, in Cancer, being squared to the personal, uh, the personal relationship house and the Aries individual strong will house, um, that would that would employ the family dynamic as well in the home. So you would have to learn to get along with others in, in the home, and you would probably want to be your self-centered individual self, but you would have to learn the hard way to get along with others. Say you're born into this big fat Greek family or something, you know, it's hard to be an individual if you're in a family of 12 kids, 10 kids in the middle, <laughs> you know, uh, for an example. Um, and so the, the career or the public sector, uh, you know, it's just a, a continual balancing act, uh, you know, 
<laughs> depending on where you have the planets and everything, but it, it, it's uh, the Grand Cross can be very, very challenging. Um, so uh, this particular one, there's a T squared in Uranus, which is Cancer, the Cancer house, the home and family, which I was just explaining, and a T squared of the Sun, and a T squared of Chiron. So the T squared of the Sun would be Aries against not against, but Aries learning to relate to individuals and being part of a family and not, you know, yeah, being part of a family. And, and Capricorn up in the midheaven could be learning how to be part of a group, learning how to be a worker among workers, you know, learning how to take orders from a boss. But, you know, if you're an Aries, you should probably be your own boss. That, that is one way to use this um, because it, you know, it, it, it can cause conflict. You may feel picked on, you know, by authority figures um, until you learn the dynamic and how to, how to overcome. And, you know, it's, 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 <coughs> it's very good because if exercise, exercise, meditation is key. Uh, because there will always be a feeling of stress, challenging stress, you know, just kind of being on the edge. Um, extremely strong will. Uh, and the ruling planet is Mars, so you would look to where Mars is, um, you know, to, or if you had a Capricorn ascendant, you know, you would look to where Saturn is. You know, to see where the focus would lie. But, um, yeah, so the key is to to evolve, to evolve. So, <coughs> you know, this is definitely a chart of evolution. I mean, everyone's evolving on some level. But this is a very challenging way <laughs> to evolve and you know, it's just learning lessons, learning lessons, you know, it's really hard to learn to relate, you know, to be a worker among workers, to be a family member, and to be an individual and juggle them all at once and have them all square to each other continually <laughs> at 90 degree angles. So there are breaks, like if you say you had a grand water trying or something to offset it, um, you know, <laughs> That would almost feel like a break to you because when everything's in your in your water, it's, say if you had it water or earth, um, you know, you would get a break from all this cardinal energy <laughs> for a few days maybe. But um, yeah, but not everyone has just a, a you know. The grand trine of grace in their chart, and if they do, they're either a saint or they're just just truly blessed, and they've already gone through all this work, maybe you know. But um, yeah, it's it's a very challenging dynamic, and it's it's uh, can give you vitality, and it could lead you to exceptional achievement. <laughs> There's a silver lining. This can, this can lead you to exceptional achievement. But first you need to learn to know yourself, to conquer yourself, and then you can go on to exceptional achievement and you can learn, learn yourself, learn your chart, learn your dynamics, and learn to integrate um, all, these, all these different facets and um, learn how to <laughs> Learn how to accept the challenge. Learn how to, you know, I think working, <clears throat> working and being your own boss in this case would be the key. So anyway, I hope you get something out of this. And um, yeah, if you like this channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you.